Hola, Cage Fighting Connoisseurs. This is Kidnate of BloodyElbow.com, and I am here in my bathrobe looking back at UFC Fight Night. Bisping versus Lee, UFC Fight Night Macau 2014. I'm also wondering, what the hell am I doing with my life? Did I really just get up at 5.30 a.m. to watch a batch of really mediocre fights? One FC beats the crap out of UFC Asia right now. I got to say it. This is uh, nothing. If th those of you who remember what it was like to get up in the early morning to see Pride, none of the fun of that. None. This isn't even as good as Sengoku was. Um, and you know, the UFC says, hey, this, this isn't for you. This isn't for American fight fans. This is us breaking into a new market. And man, I just got to say, no way is this show breaking anybody in anywhere. You don't, you don't put your worst foot forward and expect to be welcomed into difficult territory. The Asian market has been a difficult one to crack for the UFC for a variety of reasons. But putting out sub, sub, subpar product is not going to help. Um, so a big thumbs down on the card. Not worth your time. Uh, there's maybe three fights of any relevance. Um, no fights that I enjoyed watching. Uh, maybe one or two. Because I'm a hardcore degenerate, and I was already up watching this crap. So, you know, here we go. But anyway, I'll... I'll Overall, I'd give this card one star, um, maybe one and a half stars. Um, just tedious and, and bad. I would watch it never is, is when I would watch it um, if, you, if you've missed it. All right, I'll run through the fights right quick. First up, quick talk about the main, the main and co-main, which are the only two... Uh, fights of any well, the co-main event between Tyrone Woodley and Stun Gun Kim, two top ten welterweights, that was relevant. It was also unfortunate in that Stun Gun Kim has been convinced to fight like a lunatic instead of uh, an extremely skillful wrestling uh, top control based fighter. I mean, he's a judoka, but he fights like a wrestler. He at his best. Um, a lot of sweet double leg takedowns. None of that today, and. Spinning elbowed his way into getting knocked the fuck out by Tyrone Woodley in, in uh, just over one minute, minute one. Good uh, turnaround fight for Tyrone Woodley. who needed the win, but um, if a tree falls in a forest and nobody sees it, did it really happen? If, if you fight on the fight pass fight card and nobody watches it, does it really matter? Um, you know, it is what it is. It's for Michael Bisping and Kung Lee. It was a headliner. It was of interest because I care about both fighters because I've been watching them fight for a long time. But neither of them are particularly relevant at this point in time. Kung Lee is done. I never want to see Kung Lee fight again. This was a sad, sad outing by a fighter that's given me a lot of enjoyment over the years with his skills and technique and heart. He showed a lot of heart tonight. but just had no explosiveness. Um, he's slowed down. His knees aren't where they used to be. No takedown game. None of the tosses and throws. Uh, you know, Brian Stan came out on Twitter and, and said... Uh, Nice to see a cheater lose, you know, because uh, because Kung Lee came in so roided up. Well, I, I can't say roided up, but he came in inflated, so just buffed out that uh, the accusations were flying immediately. The UFC even announced enhanced drug testing, which doesn't really mean anything because unless he's a complete idiot, he's already cycled off anything they would catch, even with a blood test at this point. But uh, you know, all the same, just just. Just pointless brutality, really. Uh, it didn't didn't really tell you anything about how Michael Bisping's doing his comeback because he's fighting a guy who's, frankly, I think too old to be in the octagon anymore. Just uh, just pointlessness. Well, let's run through the whole card. So first, right off the beginning, it was a shit show. Milana Didivia beat Elizabeth Phillips by split decision. Um, one judge gave her all three rounds. Just thought that was a little funny. Phillips spent time in all three rounds on top, and and I didn't see. My, I was extremely groggy. Uh, at that point, um, so I hardly, you know, I was dozing on and off, so I can't really say, but Phillips was pissed. She was pissed off enough to put out a Facebook that said, you know, I hate the UFC. I lost to a Russian price of shit, and if you if you agree, you're a price of shit too. Price of crap, sorry. Um, so, you know, we've probably seen a, a UFC fighter flame out there. Um, she'll at the very least be retracting the Facebook post and apologizing, I imagine, or leaving the UFC, but... Not a fight you need to see. I would skip that one. Pretty tedious stuff. Royston Wee defeated Yao Shikai in Bantamweights. Split decision. Skip it. T 
totally tedious. Uh, welterweight Colby Kevington beat Wang Yang uh, Ying with punches into the first round. That's okay. I'll give it two, two, three, maybe three stars. I'd watch it. I'd watch it later, like anytime either of these guys is fighting again. Maybe if you want to see Col what Colby Covington can do to basically a helpless opponent. Um, Bantamweight Yuta Sasaki uh, defeated Ro Roland DeLorme by submission. Now this one, Sasaki came in with a fair bit of hype among uh, the, the MMA cognoscenti, and uh, what we saw was pretty impressive. I mean, it took him no time at all to submit Roland DeLorme, who's a submission-based guy, so maybe th maybe there's something to this kid, but that's like the only glimmer of hope on this card. Alberto Mina uh, demolished Shinzo Anzai by TKO. Not a bad performance for the UFC debut, but... Um, Again, I do not. I, nothing that I saw convinced me that was UFC caliber fighting. Sasaki, I would say that one was uh, right on the verge. I think Delorme's at the very bottom tier. And then Wang Sai defeated Danny Mitchell. Terrible three-round decision. Just a tedious, awful fight. Do not watch that. Complete waste of time. And then um, in the featherweights, Ning Guangyao defeated Ying Jiang Ping in a terrible fight for the Ultimate Fighter. Feather, tough China featherweight uh, title, just awful. They were refusing to engage for long stretches of the time. Just terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, uh, you know, it was just awful. And then uh, the uh, lightweight uh, Ultimate Fighter winner, I think he was a welterweight Ultimate Fighter winner on Tough China. Shang Leping defeated Brendan O'Reilly in another tedious, boring three-round decision fight. That just, I can't imagine like who is this person. In China, that they're that they're seeking, that's gonna watch this and go, oh my God! I just saw the wildest thing on TV where two guys floundered around the cage in a cage for three rounds, you know, for 15 minutes, slogging at each other and sort of wrestle hugging, kind of kickboxing badly. I can't wait to see more. That no, nobody's nobody is reacting that way. This these guys have no personality. They've got no skill. There's nothing happening here that's good that anyone wants to see. I don't care what language you speak. I don't know where you come from. Hell, if you're coming from a culture that doesn't have any history of MMA, appreciating MMA, if MMA is brand new to you, why would you want to watch MMA if this is your entree to the sport and it's just bad? It's not It's not even freak show. Like the early UFCs were exciting because you didn't know what the fuck was going to happen and there was all this energy and chaos with flashes of skill. And that really stuck out, you know, amidst the refrigerated repairman from the Midwest. Here's Hoist Gracie. Here's Ken Shamrock. What are these submission holds? What's going on, you know? This stuff is just mediocre sportsmen half-assing it, and it just sucks. So, then you get to Tyrone Woodley, American Stun Gun Kim. You know, Woodley looked good for what you saw of him. I mean, uh... You know, the, the, the most of the fight was uh, Woodley trying to get a takedown up against the cage, and then uh, Kim getting free, and then coming at him with a really telegraphed spinning strike that Woodley caught with a punch to the back of the head that just finished Kim. And then he, he you know, because it was Josh Rosenthal referee, and he got to hit him like five or six more times. Kim wasn't out when he when he landed, but when you get hit in the back of the head like that, your balance is just shot, and he dropped like a ton of bricks. And then the you know the four rounds of Bisping beating on Kung Lee. I mean Kung Lee looked okay in the first round, but by the second round he was bloodied and blinded, and I just didn't like seeing it. I mean if Bisping's getting a knockout, and this is not a knockout puncher, this was a sustained accumulated damage, and Kung Lee's face you know just looked horrible. It looked like they'd been through a meat grinder. Both eyes swollen, cuts all over his face, lacerations. Just who wants to see this? I mean this wasn't fun. This was just sad. This was a bear baiting. Um, I mean, it's good for Bisping to get the win. I'm sure he felt vindicated because he he seems to believe that Kung Lee was uh, using steroids to prepare for the fight, which is entirely possible. The testing is inadequate, but at the same time, Kung Lee hasn't been caught, so who's to say uh, what he did or didn't do? But Brian Stan came out, but he didn't name names, but he came out and said, nice to see a cheater lose, Bisping insinuated, you know, from some pictures that Kung Lee was distributing on the internet before the fight that that uh, dude was was jacked up. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. It didn't it didn't make any difference because he's so old and slow and his knees are so bad. He's got nothing left. I mean, you know, it's it's sad and frustrating. There's not another Kung Lee on the horizon. I don't know 
I've never seen a fighter quite like Kung Lee with his mix of of uh, amazingly wide arsenal of kicks, explosiveness, and incredible throws and takedowns. Just the kind of excitement he could bring in his heyday, pretty unparalleled. Still left a little bit of a bad taste in his mouth because he started late, managed his career very carefully. I never really felt like he was in the biggest fights he could have been, definitely not fighting the best competition in the world, but still a very fun fighter, and, and hats off to Kung Lee for thanks for uh, the memories, man. And and um, nice to see Bisping get a win, I guess. His eye looks that he had multiple surgeries on still looks funny. Uh, you know, looks like uh, cross-eyed. Makes me worry. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, he's got his retina, detached retina healed and he's safe to fight. But anyway, just a bummer of an event. Now, now we're going to go to Tulsa tonight on FS1 and watch uh, Benson Henderson and Rafael Dos Anjos. Zane Simon will be back after that with the sixth round uh, review of that. Hopefully it's a better card. I can't see how it won't be. I, I guarantee that the, the Tulsa card will be a better one. Um, and then we'll go from there. Then we're going rolling into UFC 177, which is possibly the weakest pay-per-view of the year. And in a year that saw UFC 174, that is saying something. So... Anyway, we just got to get through this crunch time, and, and then uh, things are, will be looking up. The next uh, fight card, UFC Fight Night, is, is uh, Jack Ray Souza versus Gegard Mousasi. Uh, and so, uh, the same night as the Bellator season opener. So that one, they kind of stacked out, and they've got Overeem and Ben Rothwell on there. I mean, that that's a fairly fun card. So, you know, things are perking up a, a little bit in the future for UFC fans. Anyway, blah, 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 cynical, griping. Kid Nate, bloody elbow, I'm out of here. Follow me on Twitter, Kid Nate. Give us a like on the video. Subscribe to MMANation.com on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you later. Adios, MMA aficionados.